welcome to Draw the Day Creative Videos. I'm Alex and I'm a glass artist. I also work as an Arts for Wellbeing artist for Cartwheel Arts. I've made this video so that you can follow along and I'll show you what materials you'll need. Today's activity is all about having fun. So grab some materials and let's work together. Today we're going to be doing Colour Me In. You will need a colouring sheet, paints, if you have any, and something to paint with, like a paintbrush, sponge or cotton bud. Collage materials, scissors and glue. And either pencils, crayons or felt tips. Don't worry if you don't have all of these materials. You can work with one, two or all of the different materials available. Don't forget to cover your table and ask an adult when working with scissors. Today we're going to be doing some colouring. Here's a few examples of ones I did previously. So there's flowers and there's landscapes. Today I think I'm going to do a landscape. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use paints. I'm going to start by using a thin wash of paint, so that's where you add a bit of water to your paint and create a wash of paint over a section of my landscape here. There we go. Just drag the paint over like that. Fantastic. Another way to apply paint is to stipple it. So here I'm going to actually mix a bit of the yellow with a bit of the green to make a slightly lighter green. And when you're stippling, you're just using the end of your brush. I'm going to work into here, into this section here. Like this. Another way to use it is to use thicker paint. So I'm going to use quite thick paint here and I'm going to do quite clear streaks of paint on this section. Smaller streaks going in a different direction, so the opposite direction to the way the paint's flowing. Okay. Another great way to apply paint is using tools. So here I'm using a cotton bud. You can use any tools you can find, find lying around. For instance, a bowl of cotton wool. Uh, you could use scrumpled up newspaper. How about a really old toothbrush? But here I'm going to use the end of a cotton bud and just apply my paint like this. It's a nice dotty effect. I'm going to add a slightly darker blue over the top, so here we're just going to add some splodges of darker blue to make the different shades within my river. Now this landscape is kind of open to your own interpretation, so I've got a river, you might not. Uh, you can also add in different tones within the landscape. Try looking outside your window. In the trees, are they all green? Or do you see some yellow, some cream, some pinks even? Or up on the moors you might see some purples from heather. Try using a mixture of different colours. Next I'm going to add a little bit of pen. Now you can use any pens, felt tips, poskers, sharpies, any kind of pen that you can find. Alternatively, highlighters work really well too. So I'm going to use a highlighter to fill in this section here. 
just going to use a long smooth line like this. There we go. I think I might fill in a couple of these as well. So we'll fill in this one here, uh, this one here, and then I think I'm going to use a different felt tip to fill in some other sections. So, ways of filling in, you can either fill it in completely or you could do something like this. How about filling in a section with lots of little dots? So I'm going to fill in this section with lots and lots of little dots. Here we go. This section is going to be the dotty section. Like that. I might fill some of these in with little dots too. Okay. Another great material to use is the pencil crayon. Now there's so many different ways you can use a pencil crayon. Yes, you can colour it completely in. So here we might use the side of the pencil crayon, for instance, to shade in one of these sections here. You can use the end of the pencil crayon to draw. So for instance, I might do some zigzaggy patterns here. Or you can fill in using different mark making techniques. So, for instance, I'm going to use this orange pencil and I'm going to do some cross hatching. So here we're going to cross hatch this whole section here. So for cross hatching you want to do lots of diagonal lines to start off with, fill in the section and then you want to do diagonal lines in the opposite way. some diagonals across here. I might use some green. Another great way to fill in is doing squiggles. So here I'm going to fill this section in with lots and lots of squiggles. So we'll do squiggly lines in here. Squiggly lines work really really well. Try out your different mark making techniques on a separate piece of paper first. See how many you can come up with. There we go. Right, next I'm going to use a little bit of collage. So, for collage what you need is some scraps of fa either fabric or you can use paper, uh, bits of magazines, tissue paper, anything you can find lying around. But make sure you, before you start cutting it up that you ask the person who owns it first. And when you're using scissors, always get an adult to help. So I'm going to start off by cutting some sections of hillside here. So I'm just going to cut some arches. Don't worry about them being exactly the same as the picture below. You can see this one isn't. It'll create your own unique landscape. I'm going to use Pritt Stick to apply it. But if you don't have Pritt Stick, uh, PVA would work just as well or any other simple type of glue. So we're going to add a layer of landscaping here. I might use a section of this. This is just a piece of uh, greenery that I found. So we'll do a section here. There we go. I'll add this bit in here. Then I think we need some at the other side too. So we'll use. Oh, I could maybe use this bit. There we go. Now I'll stick that one on there. And here I've got what looks like a bit of fabric from someone's shirt. I think we're going to use a piece of that too. How's it looking? Don't forget to share what you're making with us. It'd be great to see the fantastic pieces you're making. Okay, so there we've got a little bit of collage. 
Now I might go back into paints. So I'm going to use a slightly smaller paintbrush this time and I'm going to create some heather effects in among the green. So to create heather we need a purple colour. So we're mixing a bit of red with a bit of blue to make a nice purpley colour here. That's it. We're just going to add a little bit of that purple in between. There we go. Don't worry if you don't have all the materials, you can use just one material or two, or you can use them all together. It's entirely up to you. Either way, I'm sure it'll look great. Another nice colour to use is an orangey tone. So, does anyone know how to make orange? Yes, red and yellow. So we're going to mix a bit of red, we're going to mix a bit of yellow to make a nice orangey tone. So here we're going to use a bit of orange in this section here. And I think I might use a bit of the orange up here too. Fantastic. Right, I'm going to go back to green and add a bit more green to my piece, I think. So up here, I think we might do a few of these in a nice green tone. Okay. Right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my fence. So to create my fence, I'm actually going to use colouring crayons. If you've got any kind of crayon, it would work well. If not, use felt tips or pencils again. So with my crayons, I'm going to create nice streaks of colour. I'm going to use the end flat on to create my fence. I'm going to let my fence fade out to white as well, so that I don't have a sharp edge to my piece. But I've got a softer edge instead. There we go. There we go, so we've created my fence. And in between my fence, I'm going to use a little bit more mark making. This time, I think I'm going to use stripes. So we'll do some little stripes here. There we go. Right, in among here, I think we need another colour, don't we? So, how about we use a dark green crayon? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a light rub in between each of these circles here. There we go. I'm just going to do a rubbing around there. Here I'm just using the edge of the crayon, or the point of the crayon if you've got pointy crayons. That will give a much more accurate finish. You can always use your finger to smooth a bit of it together. And go right round your edges. Get a nice finish on that. There we go. That's it. Okay, so that's that section filled in. Now I need to work on the sky. What I'm going to do with the sky is I'm going to layer up my materials. So I'm going to start off using the edge of a pencil crayon to get a base layer of colour. So we've got a nice blue base to our sky here. Don't worry about being too accurate because it's just the base. Then on top of that I'm going to use a sponge. So a sponge is a great way to apply paint. This is just a regular kitchen sponge, I've cut it in half and I'm using the corner. 
So using the corner, I'm going to apply a bit of light blue paint to my sky. There we go. There we go. A bit more. Getting a nice light sky. And what do we need in the sky? Yes, we need a sun. So, let's have a look. I've got a nice yellow pen here. I'm going to colour in my sun. But instead of colouring it in fully, I'm going to use lines. So here, I'm going to use curvy lines for my sun. I might add a few rays as well, just to really brighten it up. Then I'm going to have a look at the piece. And there's a few little gaps that I quite like to fill in. So what could I use? I could maybe use an orange highlighter. Do a few more of those circle patterns in here. I could use a crayon and fill in this section here. What other patterns could I make? I know, how about some zigzags? I'm gonna do some zigzags here to fill in this section. Crazy zigzag patterns. By now, your piece should be looking quite full. What do you think? Do you think we need to add some more? I think a tiny bit more. Right. I'm going to bring a little bit of pink in here. I'm going to use the pink to fill in this section here. And I'm going to use a little bit of pink to go over some of this. It's a little bit faint. There we go. On my wood of the fence, I'm going to use another pencil to add a few detailed lines. So in wood you have kind of swirly patterns. So I'm going to add a little bit of detail for the wood. Using some swirly patterns for the grain. There we go. Right, I think that's me about done. How are you getting on? What do you reckon? I hope you've enjoyed following along with this video. If you did, please like and share with your family and friends. We'd love to see what you've created. So please tag us with at Cartwheel Arts and hashtag draw the day when you put your pictures online. Either that or you can email your pictures to admin at cartwheelarts.org.uk and we'll feature them in our Draw the Day online gallery. Until next time, thank you. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.